Goldsboro, North Carolina. I never hear many good things about this town, but they do have a mall for us to look at. One that's a bit more vintage than you realize. Let's have a look at the Berkeley Mall and maybe discuss Goldsboro itself along the way. Now, for clarification, I am aware that there is a place in California called Berkeley, but as far as I can see, the Berkeley Mall in Goldsboro, North Carolina has no affiliation. Now, there isn't a lot of information on the Berkeley Mall, so who knows what secrets this mall holds, but I was able to comb newspapers.com for more. Berkeley Mall would open its doors around March 1975, hosting the following department stores as its anchors. Sears, JCPenney, and Wiles, or Wheels, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it. Wheels in particular would be somewhat late to the party, hosting its grand opening in August 1977. For the time, the mall was built in a field next to the then new US 70 and US 13 freeway, but over time would be the beginning of a major retail corridor for the region. The 80s are rather muddy, but it does show that there were a few anchor changes that happened. Sometime around 1988, Wiles would get bought out by a department store named Brody's, and Brody's would take over operations at the Berkeley Mall, among others. Belk would run hiring ads in 1989 and 1988 for a Berkeley Mall location, but I found a mention as far back as October 1982 mentioning Belk in the form of Belk Tyler at Goldsboro Mall specifically. And as a blast from the past, this mention was part of an advertisement for the Nimslow 35mm 3-dimensional camera. Those of you who grew up back in the day, was Belk really here in 1982 alongside Wiles? It makes little sense since they have a double anchor presence here, but it still leaves me wondering. In 1998, Brody's would get acquired and vored by an unlikely candidate, Profits. The Brody's at Berkeley Mall would be one of six stores that would get overhauled and converted into Profits. And this wouldn't be the end of the company behind Brody's, however. As rumor has it, they would go on to develop shopping centers and even lifestyle centers. Profits' reign wouldn't last long, however, as Belk would come in to acquire and take over operations in 2005 and finalize the conversion in 2006. Disaster would strike in 2011 when Hurricane Irene struck the state. This happened too far east of me to remember but the coastal plains got hammered by this hurricane and Berkeley Mall suffered a roof collapse during the storm. The Belk store was evacuated, but no injuries were reported. It's not known when the damage was fixed or if the mall closed for any extended time because of it, but I presume this was done urgently and in a matter of days, if not a couple weeks. Berkeley Mall would be mostly quiet throughout the 2010s until October 2018 when Sears announced that their Goldsboro, North Carolina store would be one of 142 stores closing its doors for the last time. This would leave just JCPenney and Belk's Double Anchor store as their primary anchors while Rue 21 and Joanne serve as a sort of junior anchors. But once again, things are quiet. Not even the terrible 20s could get a peep out of this mall. Berkeley Mall has an old school feel to it that most malls have shed long ago. It has a vintage look and many of the stores appear to be stuck in the 80s or barely made it past the 90s. 
but at the same time, its occupancy is still okay, with only the Sears wing really suffering. Additionally, it is in good shape with a few maintenance issues to speak of. While the mall is due for an update, the current owner, Fizon Enterprises, appears to have things under control. I gave my summary on the mall and don't have much more time, but let's talk about Goldsboro, North Carolina. As a resident of a state who has only visited for the mall and have passed through in the past, I have never heard anything good about Goldsboro. Bad drivers, bad food, bad livability, bad bad. Now it's not the worst place to be in North Carolina. Henderson, Lumberton, Kinston, and Laurenburg have that beat. And Fayetteville isn't doing too hot either. But I wanted to see what picture Area Vibes painted to see if Goldsboro really is bad. And uh, wow. Their overall livability score is 59 according to Area Vibes, which is pretty bad. Let's break that down. Amenities are great, and cost of living is good, but everything else aside from user ratings got an F. Crime, employment, housing, schools, all Fs. Wow. I think the only thing keeping Goldsboro on its feet at this point is the Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. Now if you live in Goldsboro, North Carolina, do tell me what your town is all about. Is it as bad as I've heard, or is it just overblown? Thanks for having me, Goldsboro, North Carolina. And until next time, this is Doomy Grunt wishing you and the Berkeley Mall farewell and good luck in the future. I'm not joking about the bad food rumor either. I remember seeing some comments way back when saying that Goldsboro food is terrible.